Whoa! There you are. You have the kind of this glow around you. Um, Angelic. <laughs> so hey, we're live here on um, YouTube and we've got some giveaways. So stay with us because we're gonna give away some stuff. And you asked a question what a Venometer meter is and I don't know. So stay tuned to find out what that is. And you hashtag painters care. So um, here's a Venometer. I'm gonna show you a couple other tools today. We're gonna talk about these. Here's a tool that I um, just got in this box in the mail and I showed it on Instagram and I'm going to talk about that. We've got, um, Hi came out with a new five in one. This is not an It's not a five in one. It's a seven in one. And why? Tell me. Can, I'm going to, we're going to talk about it here just a little bit later. Tell me more. There's something special about this. Um, not a five in one. Five in one. This used to be my favorite five in one that I ever used. I'd like the black handle and everything. But they've added a tool to, to it. make it seven in one. To make it a seven in one, um, and so we got that. Um, we do have um, Hi, some pretty sick. Th th these are safety glasses, and these are the sickest safety glasses you'll ever wear. So, but um, we had a glitch on our store. We told people they were available last week, and people had problems purchasing them because they were inputted. We forgot to wrong. put the dimensions in them, and so. Now they can Cause, be purchased because we gave away some. Yeah, um, they, on our last and nobody show. bought them with the gift card, and now we know why. And we so fixed it. It's fixed. So what else do we got to show? Um, oh, what, we're what gonna give away five of these. We're gonna give away five masks. So if you need a mask, this um, you know, because people are wearing masks. The, this is um, it's a illegal to not wear masks in, in a lot of states. Some places. So we're gonna give away yeah. some masks today. You're gonna give away five of them. Yes. Um, and. Because of um, Painters Care, paintlifepro.com, they are giving away three gift cards of $25 to use at their store. So, so if you want to win a gift card, 25 bucks, um, three of them, yes. we're going to give away right here. So, mm -hmm. um, and if you if you watch this and you're not live, unfortunately, you're going to miss the giveaways, but yes. you can still watch it and learn what a vanometer is. I own a vanometer. And, I don't um, know what a vanometer is. It's something, um, can you guess? Um, see if anybody can guess what a vanometer is. Um, something um, cabinet guys, you know, when you're painting cabinets, mm -hmm. it's um, something you could use. I could have used. Well, cabinet. let's see so, if anybody um, knows what one is. And maybe they could be the first one. Kevin Jones, the painter, is with us. And Brian mendez and carmelo and you can probably scoot over so you're not in that sun thing like you don't like me being angelic so we get get away from the angelicness that now you look the lighting is just perfect perfect on you oh so good it's all about the lighting you're even more beautiful oh now. that's so, sweet so um it's for mileage that would be a speedometer or no that's from the paint bus no that's a speedometer what's the thing that the mileage it is a violet there's the thing that calculates your mileage on a car. I don't think it's speedometer. No, the speedometer, the one that calculates. That's how fast you go. The, the thing that calculates. RPMs. <laughs> um, I would like to know um, what it's. It's that I am so exciting. Okay. Um, it's a moisture level. Moisture level. No, it's not for moisture level. Um, so. Mill gauge. Um, God odometer. 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 That's what air, you're thinking of. Look, so um, formula. Just guess. Air air flow meter. Formula. You're formula. gonna get our first twenty five dollar gift, gift card, card so to paintlifepro.com. So you just won. You need to email us at something to do with air. Somebody says I'm gonna show the um the van. We well, need your email looks... address to send to send you the gift card. So formula, you want a twenty-five dollar gift card to paint my pro. There you go. So um, you What's asked the for email questions address? because we're going to be answering questions. What's the email address? The email address is I don't know. We because I I get the, confused. I don't think we should give the way because you last time gave my yeah that my wasn't personal good. email live yeah. and now my email address is bombarded with emails. I don't think yeah. we should say it live. Okay, you should just DM us. Can you DM on YouTube? He can message us. On YouTube? Somehow, I don't know. Everybody knows how to get a hold of us if you really work it. It's support. We'll message him. Formula. 
<laughs> no, just he can he support can... at idaho-painters.com. There you go. Paint Life Mafia. Michael Slanda's um, hanging out with us. He's on. He's a mafia member. So um, here's the tool. So I'm gonna show. Are you gonna talk about that thing? The band of No, we're gonna. I'm gonna go one more thing because okay. just keep the suspense rolling okay. for those people that want to know what the vanometer is. Um, so here's the high five one. If I if I, if I didn't have a two edge knife, which that is my f very favorite five in one. I don't think that's not a two edge knife. There, I don't know if we have one in here. We don't have one in here. But th this is the one I carried for years and years. I absolutely love it. I just like the smooth handle goes in and out of your pocket. I like the size of it. I don't like those oversized five in ones or just. I mean, just too much for me. But look, so it has a screwdriver on it now. And I can't, like, when I, as soon as I saw Why does this, that make it seven? Because... um, Because it has something else on the end right here. Oh, okay. And I don't know what that little thing does, but... That so, makes it seven? Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I mean, this is the five-in-one part, but this becomes six-in-one. And I'm sure this little knobby thing does something else. Is it right? like a hammer? Um, oh, I know what it does. Okay. It, um, so if you have, um, <laughs> like, like a kid. it hammers stuff. So mm -hmm. like if you have, um, their anchors, a wall anchor, you hit the wall anchor and it punches the wall anchor in the wall. So, and then you can spackle over the top of it. But I can't tell you, like, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, it, instantly I said, that's crazy. Why didn't somebody come up with that 20 years ago? And why would you want this little flathead screwdriver on here? Because you're removing... Switch plates. Switch I can't plates. tell you how many times... <laughs> Switch as a, plates. Every painter... I mean, you're not a painter unless you have a 5-in-1 in, in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a 5-in-1. But how many times I'm in the house and I'm doing switch plates and I'm too lazy to walk out to the van, so I just take the end and I'm doing unscrewing my switch plates and then it's always with following and this portion. And, and it's so obnoxious how long it takes. And I'll sit there and spend five times longer doing it like that instead of walking out to my van because I'm too lazy. But now all you got to do is flip. Flip. It's the flip bit. And it actually has... A removable bit so if you wanted to switch it to like um, I don't know switch it to and it's, I guess it's, it feels like it's magnetic it's magnetic if you wanted to switch it to um, who knows um, uh, Phillips head yeah. something like that but now you consider unscrew your switch plates a lot faster with that it's on the 7 one flip bit so the improvement on the 5-in-1 finally came and I liked it so much we put it in our store at store.theidopainter.com. So there it is. Um, okay. Do you have any so, questions for me to so answer? So Edward before we said, get to hey, the... guys, with the new blue frog tape, do you think it's necessary to caulk your tape? Um, okay, that's a good question. I just posted a video. Compilation. Um, on caulking your tape. And it's mm -hmm. about... Um, it's about like 45 minutes long and it's doing it's better YouTube. than any video I think I've ever posted over a thousand videos in wow. a week's period of time. It's now, it's like the best. And it's crazy because it's it's actually a compilation of um, videos that I've done in the past on um, caulking your tape. And yes, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. And there's times when we still caulk our frog tape. So if blue frog tape is the same as green frog tape where it has the polymer on the, the edge of the tape that swells when liquid hits it. But on glass, no need to caulk. But if you're on a rough surface, um, the the tape itself sometimes cannot contour to the peaks and valleys of the surface itself. So if you're trying to get- How about a, level five walls? A level five is, means it's smooth, so it'd yeah. be like glass. So you wouldn't need to caulk your tape there. If you're on any smooth surface, no. But if you're trying to do a straight line on an orange peel textured wall, we always caulk our tape. But I think that's where people have gotten confused about what you do because they don't understand orange peel. Because a lot of countries and even different states, they don't have orange peel. Yeah, a lot of people see us like um, caulking our tape on a wall like this. If you look at the they, wall like this, in the video, you probably can't, you probably think it's a smooth wall. I don't know if you can see the texture. There's in it. no smooth That's a at heavy all. textured wall. That's mm -hmm. like um, a texture guy who had no clue what 
the heck he was doing and he wasted the walls. I mean, our walls, the texture job on our walls in our house here is really, really bad. And, and I am so nice that I, I volunteer you to fix it by doing Venetian plaster. Yes, yeah, so I've done Venetian time. plaster and it, it takes me a lot just to get the walls smooth, flat, um, flat to do a Venetian mm -hmm. plaster because um, the, the walls are so rough. So in Canada, we sand walls four times. Um, yeah. Walls are like glass. Yep, and, and that's if you want like a level five finish. That's, that's what, what I want to do. House. And so, and I know, uh, like in Canada, the other parts, even other parts of the United States, um, smooth walls are very popular here. Um, they're very rare. So, everything's predominantly in Idaho, is predominantly um, Orangeville texture and Sun Valley. And the reason why mm -hmm. it's Orangeville texture is it's um, 10 times faster to apply and it hides all the sins that the drywallers do and um, hides imperfections it's easier to touch up you know for the homeowner in the end um so there's just a lot of reasons for you know that um it, it keeps the cost of the home down. who wants a um, patriotic chef mask um, chet langsford um level mm -hmm. five is awesome it is awesome brandon ray have you had a chance to make um a painter's i just missed that a painter's, painters toboggan painter's toboggan so and i oh, made the question so do you know what a toboggan is uh, you go down the mountain snowing. A painter's toboggan. You snow down the mountain. I asked what it was, and um, because he's asked me, and I'm in, in I, I'm in the process of doing it. It's a beanie. We call it a beanie. So you know what a beanie is. A beanie. It goes in your head. Okay. What's so that? they're asking if I would, if, if he's asking if I had a, if I'm, I'm making a. I've made no, a toboggan oh, is like a no, you sit on a it's a beanie in another country. Oh, so and I'm making I just learned something. a leather patch that goes on and stuff. It's in the process and like a lot of stuff. It's all on hold because of the coronavirus and stuff. So, so. Brandon says texture, I think, is a way for the industry to lower quality and lower the require, required skill set among the trades. I agree with that. What was that? He's saying why we have these textures. It's to make it easy. I think it started with like the track homes in California where it is, you know, how to make painting really easy and how to it, hide imperfections of the wall without spending a lot of money preparing the walls, sanding them five times, making sure it's perfect laying out the paint. You, it, it starts by lowering the cost of the home to get people into homes that are more affordable. That's, I mean, that's, you, there you, is a place. You yeah. can't. I mean, you can't sell a home for a brand new home for one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars if you're um, putting a level five finish on it because the amount of labor um, and effort that goes into that finish along with the painters finishing it, the the price of the house is going to go up. So, I mean, the price of a house here in um, Idaho is significantly lower than the price of a house in um, like a lot of California. And so in order to make houses more affordable, there's some things you've got to they do cut. to make them more affordable. Mass produce. So who wants Does a patriotic want mask? Who needs a mask? Does anybody even care? Does anybody want one? So Cause... Idaho starts Monday. We start um, heading back to work. So um, that's exciting. Yeah, they, exciting. Have, they have like a three or so four some step So Kevin process. Jones, the painter, said he does. Okay, Kevin Jones, the painter, you need to email us your mailing address at support at Idaho. And Chris Krieger. Is, Chris Krieger. Well, and, give them the website because I always forget it. It's um, support at idaho-painters.com. Okay. Chris, so, Chris Krieger. And um, so... Cool, there's two of them that okay. we just gave away. So, and we have three more to do. So we're gonna talk um, the Vanometer. So the title of the video is, what the heck is a Vanometer? So and did here I say is, Kevin Jones the painter? Here is a Vanometer. Is that what I said? Yeah. So right here, so here's, um, there's a good look at the Vanometer right there. So what a Vanometer Whoa. is, is- Did um, you buy that? Um, I had it given to me. Oh, that was nice. Kyle gave it to me. Oh, that was very nice of Kyle. So Kyle from Paintline, who manufactures um, spray racks, uh, spray racks um, the spray racks and the dry racks that we use for cabinet painting. This is a device that you will set in your spray booth, like 
it though. Um, so you have a fan in your spray booth that's sucking the air out of your booth. So it's giving you um, clean air and not allowing all the dust and um, VOCs and, and everything to circulate in the air. Um, and it's and especially if you're using lacquers, it's getting um, the flammable products it. out. This is going to measure the airflow um, that's going through your booth. And you need to have your um, velocity. It's going to measure the velocity of the air. It needs to be at a certain amount to, um, to recirculate basically air, to get dirty air out and clean air out. Yeah. Do you, and, does he sell those? Or, I mean, it seems like that's important for you um, to have. Kyle doesn't sell them. Okay. So what I did in the spray booth, I set it on the floor and you, and you set on the floor and on the other end of the spray booth is, the, is my fan that's sucking the air out. Mm -hmm. And we want, we wanted for the size of the spray booth that we were in, we want this, um, we want the velocity to be at 50 and at 50, it was actually keeping the air um, inside the booth completely clean where I didn't have to wear a mask and stuff. And so this is gonna tell you what the velocity of your fan is in sucking the air out. So if your fan isn't sucking, you can see, you can see that thing See it rising right there? And it's very, very sensitive. So um, it's kind of cool. So it's just testing the, velo the velocity of your <clears throat> fan and the ability of your fan to give you clean <coughs> air inside your spray booth. It's good to know that you use that because a lot of your critics say, why aren't you wearing a mask? And it's because you're using a spray booth that's sucking it out and you know that the yeah, air is so, okay. Yeah, the last um, one of the last videos um, I did, I was in a spray booth and some people were... Uh, you're just appalled that I wasn't wearing a mask and stuff and and uh, we were actually testing it to see what the air the velocity the airflow was and we knew exactly what the velocity needed to be to keep the air um, clean inside that spray booth so fresh air coming in um, dirty air going out and the velocity needed to be at 50 to do that for the size booth we had so eight by eight booth, but somebody's air. got like um, a whole mathematical formula right there we'll look at that, um, I have chat it right line here. for eight by eight booth eight by eight equals 64 64 times 100 equals 64 cfm total so we got people out here some math so people guys. want to know where to get one of those is that something that would be smart for you to carry to make accessible to painters or, um, th that's a possibility so i was really fascinated when i saw it because i'd never even seen one before there's the company right there um so dwyer instruments um in michigan city i'll find out from kyle and um, see how much it cost, and yeah. um, it see where he bought it and stuff. And I don't because I, I have you no could idea, contact them. I could. Yeah. Go right to the oh, source. Yeah, there's actually a phone number right on there. Yeah, go right to the source. source. Yeah. So um, yeah. So there's that. We got um, any questions? Any questions? So we have. Um, let's see. What's the difference between spraying oil-based paint and water-based paint through one spray pump? Um, highly, highly not recommended. So um, when you're using... They both go through the pump the same, right? They do, but they clean up with different, um, you know, um, products. So one cleans up with water, one cleans up with... Um, if it's oil-based, cleans cross up. Cross-contamination. Yeah, yeah cross-contamination is what you get. And every time you know you're switching back and forth what we found out is um very quickly over time is the cross contamination starts to um harden paint on the inside of the hose um in, in also places where it starts to settle like in your intake tube it also starts to clog filters really fast so your gun filters and your um and your uh, manifold filters start to get clogged when you cross contaminate um you, your pumps you have to have a really thorough thorough cleaning process in, in order to um cross can um not to have cross contamination and so for instance you know when you're cleaning out your pump and everything there's always a certain portions of the internal workings of the 
pump, say like the back of the filter, the very end of the filter, um, the water never goes on the, the manifold filter, never goes completely all the way through it. And so some paint usually will sit back in there or um, you know, water. So if it's water, now the next time you run oil-based paint through there, it's gonna go through there. It's gonna harden that, um, you know, that water or that paint that's in there mm -hmm. or vice versa. Or if it's oil-based um, paint that's left in there and the water goes in there, hits it um and so what happens over time you'll get you know those bits and pieces and stuff settling getting hard starting to break free and it starts to um clog your um your prime valve oh, we started when we started using oil base and water base in the same pumps i can't tell you how many times we had to take the dang prime valve out and little tiny hard pieces of paint were um, getting stuck in the prime valve. And when you take a prime valve apart, it's, you know, it's a pain like that. So and is one of them harder on pump um, sprayers than the other? You don't know, uh, well, um, like oil-based products, you know, you're cleaning with paint thinner and stuff. And so mm -hmm. the internal workings are never going to um, corrode and rust. Uh, with these pumps, they're stainless steel, but we, we noticed we took, tore apart um, a Graco sprayer after only three weeks of using it and not using any type of um, pump protector or anything in it. Um, the internal workings um, were corroded and rusted in a Graco pump at 395. So, um, and that was water-based. So you have to use like pump, um, pump protector. We use auto antifreeze because it has an anti-corrosive in it too. And so um, when you're done, you got to thoroughly clean it. If you're, if you're using oil-based and water-based, you should clean with mineral spirits. Um, everything take the filter apart clean it all if you're gonna run water, a water-based product through it but after the mineral spirits you should run um, acetone through it mm -hmm. and um, acetone is one of those cleaners that won't cause cross-contamination you know um, issues so clean it with uh, mineral spirits and then um, flush it with acetone then um, you could run water through it and then you want to run fresh water through it until you um before you have some you videos through. on youtube showing people like yeah. how you clean it somebody wants to know dh design says how long does it take you guys to clean out your pump sprayer at the end of the day i i would say we don't i mean we don't sit there and just clean it out we don't have just one person sit there and clean it. we'll run some water in it go off do other tasks and then everybody that walks buy it we'll just um, grab the gun cycle it into a pump for like 10 15 seconds and then walk off and what we always called it um what we call it is we we allow the the pump to clean itself because you the water is going to cycle through it and it's going to move it and stuff and it just sits there and it dissolves the paint it's sitting out in the sun typically and so um the the water's getting warm from the hose getting warm and stuff like that and it liquefies the paint and they're quicker so every now and then Multitasking. Just, yeah, right now when somebody you know hits the um, trigger, and it's amazing how much faster and less um, manpower it takes in hours to clean the pump doing that way. Eventually, you know, somebody's gonna switch out the water too, and then um, and then we'll do it a few more times. If you sat down just to clean your pump, you should be able to clean your pump in less than ten minutes. Okay. If so somebody's taking more than ten answer. minutes to clean a pump, um, that's way too long. So. Um, Kevin Jones, the painter, he's getting ready to go and said thanks for um, us being here. He said flat or sash brush is better. I've only used a three inch flat brush for 25 years. You know, that what's, that's what's interesting. And um, I think flat brushes in Europe are predominantly used. And, um, and I couldn't understand it. I mean, I started using um, a flat and angled, and I can get into a corner a lot easier with an angled sash brush. Mm -hmm. and, um, and You're so holding this, that up. This is, is, that, is that quality? This is it's this is not quality. But, okay, this is um, not quality. Yeah, I'm going to talk about this here in a second. But um, to me, a three inch angled sash brush, angled bristle brush. Um, is the most versatile brush. Did that you, you can start use. using flat ones, or when did you start using angle sash? I started using angle in the very beginning. Okay, you did. And then I um, uh, 
because recommendations from other people watch my videos, well, why don't you use flat? I started using flats, trying them out, and um, I couldn't get into corners very well with a flat at all. But in Europe, flats are more common. But I'll tell you, it's to me, it's so much easier to start off your cut-ins in a corner mm -hmm. with an angled bristle brush. And so um, I always use angled, and to me, have you um, tried it with the flat? I have. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's, it's to me, really difficult to start in your corners with a flat. Mm -hmm. And so um, this right here is a product somebody sent me, you know, this thing. Um, I get sent stuff just like all the time. And it, it came with all, there's a whole box of stuff. And one of the um, interesting things about this whole thing is It's how, sat in somebody's basement for a long how time. How old it is. Um, it's, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, like, the age of it, it, it's so old that the plastic is, like, all brittle. And so the plastic is, like, breaking. So, so this person um, said, real fast, Sean Dawson, studied bow in Milan. They teach more about using the bead of the paint with a flat. Does that make sense? The bead? The bead of the paint with a flat. Um, no. you know, I know it, it, it's, it's, it comes down to personal preference. It's mm -hmm. really what you, what works for you. Mm -hmm. Um, if you started off using flats and that's what you learned with, that's what you're going to be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, um, don't, don't get stuck in painters are very resistant to change. Mm -hmm. Um, try other things because it's amazing. If you just try, you might find something that works um, better for you. If not, at least you tried. You so, know it's out there. You know it's out there. You've done that. Um, because yes, and I've done that. Where there's um, one thing I wouldn't try, and it literally costed me in about ten years about a, several hundred thousand dollars in lost profits because I was unwilling to try a tool, and it was um, the power roller because I just thought it would take too long to clean up and set up and little did I know that was totally untrue mm -hmm. but for years I wouldn't use one here's and this is the it, the brush that came with this and you probably can't see in the video but this the age of this thing is it's so old and here look at the packaging it's so, so bad. here's this is the brush cover it's bad. it was cut by hand I mean literally by hand a pair of scissors to go in there and then look at this. This is interesting. So who sent us this? We don't even know. It used to have a hole to screw on to um, an extension pole and it no longer does because this was hand glued on the top. But look at the, the brush here. I, look at that. It's from that, Canada. That is, that's creating a well. Canada. It, it's taking and creating a well in a brush, taking to a whole new level. <laughs> Because that's going to be the biggest well in a brush that you can that's ever imagine. That's not a good well, right? That's not a good well. So have you gone to their website? I have gone to that. So one website works and one does not. The website on this package does not work. So um, if you could read that, the website on this package so they, does work. They're a company that's in business, I guess. Um, apparently. Maybe. it's the, the it, But this thing screws on so... These are, um, it's interesting. So you screw this on an extension pole. And it's, it's in, this is what's interesting, is the idea actually it's is not good. bad. No. It's not bad. And actually, but it just is very... how it functions is actually not bad. But the plastic, this brush that this thing is made on, I mean, this, this is cheaper than a chip brush. I mean, a chip brush is better than this. Mm -hmm. So, um... Alan Raheski's on. So you can interchange this so I can take this off. So now if this was made with like industrial plastic with like what DeWalt tools are made with, mm -hmm. I mean, you may have something. So this, this, um, it's just a matter of taking the idea and um, this would be like a prototype. Maybe, and so maybe that's what, cause there was no rhyme reason, no explanation. This just showed up in the mail. And so I have no idea um, is this somebody's prototype that they wanted me to give them feedback on? It's well, like, it's a prototype um, that maybe they made it and then they found it in their grandparents' maybe it, garage. It like, and they're like, wow, maybe this is the thing that's going to, for our inheritance, that's going to be, maybe it was somebody Grandpa that was wearing on it. Found it on Storage Wars. <laughs> they found it on Storage Wars. I mean, look at And look they're at like, the, this could make us. Look at the bristles. And it hasn't even been used it's yet. It's static. 
It's like my hair, static electricity. Okay, that's really weird. <laughs> so there you have it. So that was an interesting tool set. So Alan's with us and he wants to give away a Paint Life shirt. So Alan, what we're doing on this show, we're gonna be on Facebook later and we're gonna do some different giveaways. Right now we're doing some gift cards at paintlifepro.com. And so um, people can buy a shirt with that gift card or they could buy something different. And we are giving away some face masks. Some American so on flag with face Alan, back. you can give away um, a gift card for a shirt. So um, who are you going to give something? Who's going to ask the next question? The next good question that we can answer. So okay. um, here's, a, here's, a, here's another tool. So I, as a painter, I have a tool bag. And um, I still haven't made my tool bag video. I'm going to make a tool bag video that everything that mm -hmm. I always carried in my tool bag um, that you should carry in a tool bag. Um, is that when I was spraying, I always had a tool bag on me when I was the one yes. spraying or when I am the one. And, and I still have the tool bag on me painting. Um, but uh, I always had a scraper, a little scraper, and I use them to scrape um, over spray off windows, drips on windows, um, on the floor, on different places. But I, I just saw this on Hyde's website. I've never seen this before. Isn't that what you say? The, and, the difference is, is you know how to solve problems and fix things. And so having little things like this in your... It's, um, whoa, what so is that? it's a mini scraper Whoa! and it has blades in it. So I can't tell you how many times I had the mini scraper and the blade is all dull and stuff. Now the mini scraper has whoa. five blades. I want one of those. This one's mine because I keep one in my kitchen and you know, so look, I always it, try to open stuff and look at that. it's always dull. So now oh, the thank mini you. scraper. I just won that. That is, I can't, I like I mean, that. So I like that. I saw that on Hyde's um, website, and I'm like, you know what? We got to put that thing in our store. That's the I, coolest. I really like um, that. So every painter should have a mini scraper in their tool yeah. bag. Now you should have a mini scraper that holds its own blades. Because here, here's something, and um, Darren, who mm -hmm. used to work with me, mm -hmm. um, did this. And so, because we had the mini scrapers, and, and we always carry yeah. them in our pocket, not our tool bag. Uh -huh. um, th this is you don't want to do. Okay. So, um, this Pro is... Pro tip, don't do this. Yeah, so actually this mini scraper works a little bit differently. So the blade is changed differently than normal ones. So you flip the blade around. Um, that's interesting. So the, the blade, it's even held in there differently. Hmm. So I'm learning something new. Yeah, but I really like that because we I so, have one like bright pink one and it's always dull. And that I could keep all the blades and change it. So now the blade is exposed so darren stuck this oh in his pocket no with the blade exposed and no. he stuck his hand into his pocket and i can't tell you how big of the gash was on his um i think it was, I think it was his thumb that actually oh. you know connected the blade and um it filleted his thumb so, so um before we do a giveaway i see that um william william is here from spain and then somebody was spain. just saying that um he's in france so you know share where you're at and how you're doing are you working as a painter um are you having to stay home and if you're having to stay home how are you spending your time you know we want to hear what people are doing in um, the community i know so what's um, we've made changes with our schedule yeah Hashtag painters care. I mean, what's that about? So hashtag painters care. Um, we thought the shirts were coming in. Can you show a picture? They're going to be ready on um, Monday. Monday. And all. Where's my phone? You're looking at your phone. Whoa. Oh, my phone's right there. Okay. That's videoing this. Okay. So Weird. maybe, maybe you um, can show for a picture from here. Um, Do you want to show? Well, you should you, show. You have to go. We can show. You can, so you're looking at the store. Um, so, uh, Sean Dawson in North Carolina, repainting my house in here, and now the furniture is getting a color burst. Ah, oh. very cool. Share that on Paint Life members. Good deal. I'm uh, New Zealand, back to work Tuesday. Stuart um, got New Zealand That in the house. is awesome. And Stuart So, back was... to work, that is a good, a good thing. So, yes. glad you guys is are Is it on these shirts work. or no? Um, I don't know why you want to make it so complicated. Okay. They could just go to our store oh. and look. But okay. But it is it um, is exciting. So Chris created the shirt and it's hashtag painters care. And um, last Friday we so were the, on. There's the, that's the green one. So 
Um, that's the green one, and it says on the back of it, so hashtag painters care on the back. And 100% um, of the proceeds from those is going to give back. And so what we're going to do is we'll have a place on our website where if you know a cause or a painter that has a need, um, you can fill out an application and the money could be used to give. And if you wanna be a part of it and you wanna to donate to the cause, there'll be an application um, for that. But last Friday, um, Paintline donated a, a thousand um, masks to essential workers and they sold a thousand more at cost and they sold out um, last Friday. So that was pretty awesome. Um, Chris's mom, so my mother-in-law, she has been a seamstress since birth. No, for over 50 years, probably. More than that. More than that. She's, she's, that's how she's provided for her family and has worked. And so she got busy making masks. And so we're, we're giving, giving away, away. Um, five of these masks today. We've already given away two. So you need to give some more so, away because we are um, into this video 35 minutes. Yes, we, gotta get going. we do have to get going and we have some other products that we're going to share and some other giveaways that we're going to do on Facebook. Um, are we going to give away some glasses? Yeah, we tried to give away glasses last week, um, but we found out why people couldn't purchase them. So they can be purchased now. If you have to wear safety glasses, you might as well look super rad in your safety glasses. And Edge Eyewear has super rad safety glasses. So, so Brandon Ray said, I'd like an American flag mask, hard to find in North Carolina. There you go. Brandon Ray, this is coming to you. To you. you need to um, email us your information. Um, here in France, um, I had not stopped yet working. Maybe one week um, was calm. Let's see. Oh, shoot. Every time I touch it, it does this crazy thing. Let me see. Maybe you see um, somebody in France. So thanks, um, you Mr. Idaho Painter, for your work you do. Thank you very much. That's, um, I, I can't Theory. Even, theory. May God bless all your painters in the U.S. Um, here in France, I've not yet set working. Maybe one week. Thank you. So are you having to wear a mask? in france because if you are we want to send you we don't have one with the france flag on it no but, but we we're americans same colors isn't it yeah france but flag? we're yes but we're americans mm -hmm. and so we would like to extend send him a mask yes so you need to let us know if you uh -oh. have to wear a mask See, if you don't have to wear a mask we want to send um, it to you these safety glasses actually have the american flag on the side mm. so um there you go. Okay, so this is Any other getting... questions we can answer? Oh my goodness. Um, so they need to email us their mailing address. And so what is the email again? I always forget. Support at Idaho Painter, Idaho-Painters.com. Support at Idaho-Painters.com. I so do to is. protect my guest. Um, can you say the email one more time? Idaho or um, support at Idaho dash painters dot com. Yes, yeah, so it, Theory said he does need them to protect his guests. So you are getting a mask and you need to email us your mailing address and we will get a American um, thing mailed off to you. Here in Idaho, we're, um, they're opening the doors um, Monday. We're starting to get back to work so that's exciting um, and the weather will permit because you have an exterior yeah, you need Bob, to paint um Finnessy, i've been watching some of your um product test videos cracks me up you uh, it, you know it cracks me up like some of the crazy stuff that we get so i i like to show you know good things and then i like to show um things like that <laughs> so um but then the, the, once again I gotta say, I mean, I don't know, like, I'm just so curious about this, like, packaging, because it's so old, it's like, look at this one, it's like, it's so old, it's, it's all cracking and breaking up, and, but, uh, this is my guess, okay, this is, this is, you know, guess. you know, because we have time on our hands to be, I think maybe somebody passed away, and, and somebody found these in the garage, and they're like, Grandpa, created this let's send it to the idaho painter maybe this is gonna make us and and so they sent it off to you 
That's my yeah, guess. Got Cause, cause, handles. Because it is pretty old. Like, they didn't package it yesterday. This is one of those ones, like, um, the vibrating paintbrush that it does exist. I went and looked for it the other day, and um, it's sold in Australia. And it comes in a box and a case and everything. And, um, but they won't ship to the U.S. So Bob says, any chance you're going to test the roller that you fill with paint? Yes. I am. Did you buy one? I know. I thought you were going to buy one the other day. I ordered it. And you know what? I've never got it. I think I must have got scammed. Seriously? Yeah. It never came. You just reminded me. I paid for it. I bought one. I got online. Um legitimately bought it. I paid like so you need, 40 bucks for it. So you need to go figure out maybe, did or, you buy through PayPal? Um, I think I did. Okay, so you need to check that out. We yeah. want to get one, Bob, and we it need was to like test it. It was like big fat roller that- Probably really light. Yeah, it was crazy. And so that kind of is disappointing that we haven't got it yet. So I'll have to follow up on that. I'm looking for, um, I'm looking to follow your recommendation for Titan 440 sprayer and other accessories soon. So um, I, let me address that video. So I just did a video mm -hmm. and um, you know, I gave a recommendation on a sprayer and because I, I get asked this question all the time on my platform, um, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you go, what sprayer should I buy? Which sprayer should I buy? I mean, I'm starting a paint, paint company. What sprayer should I buy? I'm a homeowner, a do-it-yourselfer. I just need to paint my house one time. What sprayer should I buy? I mean, I, I'm just going to paint so my people fence. ask. So people ask all the time, every day. Mm -hmm. And um, in this video, I showed, and you can go watch the video, I showed... I Titan Sprayer, the very original Titan 440 that I bought. 19 and a half years ago. Um, 19 and a half years ago, I bought it and it still works to this day. It was used exclusively for three years, painting everything that we did inside, outside, um, repaints, new construction, and it still works to this day. I'm a firm believer. I bought it, I paid like $950 for a small pump that a Titan 440 will be a fabulous investment for you. And I'm not paid to tell you this right here, to tell you to go buy a 440. In the video, it worked for I you. showed that, and then I also showed um, Titan has a 410. Um, the one I, it was a 440i, and they make a 410, so I put a 410 in there because I wanted to show you what's equivalent to what I bought 19 and a half years ago because Titan now has a 440 Impact, mm -hmm. which has got some improvements to the 440i. That I, I'm not like a fan of the improvements. I don't that, that little um push ball thing. I think it's pretty cool. I don't like the um, putting the oil in there that you push the button to inject the oil because I have no idea whether it's actually injecting oil or not or how much it's injected. You're you're like pushing the button. It's actually on the side and eventually it overflows and you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea how much I was squirting in there. And then you the side glass. You I for the life of me, I can't tell how much oil is in it. So I'm not like that big of a fan of that. They just came out with a 410 recently, and the 410 is like almost a spitting image of the um, 440i. 40. It has the same lower end. The Titan Impact lower end is a little bit different. I'm not a fan of the filter because on the the 440 Impact, you have to you take actually off. have opinions. You act, you have to take off the manifold filter on the 440 Impact every single time you clean your pump because um, it does not, the halfway back on the filter, the water does not get back in there and clean it out. Never. It's it won't work. Um, the engineering is kind of a little bit off on a cleaning. On a, M, on a 440i and a 440, 410, it does. You never have to take off. The, the manifold filter and and I'll tell you the first time you spray a red door clean your pump on an impact and then go back and spray a white door a week later and you all of a sudden you see all these red spits you understand exactly what I'm talking about because mm -hmm. I learned from experience so um but I, I showed those three pumps in the video um not because um I don't use any other pumps. I don't like any other pumps. That's just what you're talking it's about. It's just what I was talking about right uh -huh. there because I was recommending for a small pump, a Titan 440 for a small pump. So and, James um, Jeanette says, so 410 is recommended? Um, okay, here's the difference. So there's some bells and whistles on an impact 
that you may like. That push ball, that if the ball gets stuck, instead of having to take it with, tap it with a hammer yeah. or take it off and um, pull out like a little piece of stuff that's stuck in the ball, that push ball is a really nice feature. That's a 440. If you, that's on a 440 impact. I think that's a cool feature and it's probably worth an extra $50. The 410 is $100 cheaper than the um, 440 impact. So if money's an issue and you wanna save money, go to a 410. The 410 just has less things that are gonna break on it. Mm -hmm. It's just, I just like- It's like the stripped down model, kind of. Yeah, it's like, and you like that. Of, I like, I just- um, you start getting a lot of computers, they can break, they can readouts, so just all this stuff that can break. I just don't like things that break. And um, I really, I really like the 410. So James, and, Jeanette has been asking these questions and you've been taking the time to talk about it. Um, we want to send you a $25 gift card to paintlifepro.com. So you'll need to email us your email address and we'll get that sent to you. Um, Paint Life Pro is now selling Titan sprayers. So you can take a look at what they're offering and um, maybe use it towards that or maybe use it for a shirt or something else. So I'll just, I'll finalize that whole thing the the impact you have the ability to um, dump your oil into the reservoir and just push a button do you like that feature do you not like that feature mm -hmm. um, it has the push um, button to release the ball that gets stuck if the sprayer is sat for a long time or some debris gets stuck in the ball do you like that feature or not like that feature and then the other thing is the negative thing is happen to take off the manifold filter every time you clean it. So you have to tilt your sprayer up, set it on its butt, and then the um, oil actually comes out of um, the, the piston area. So I mean, I, I, um, I would rather have a 410 for that reason. Um, and so I would highly recommend a 410, you know, for I have two a more, sprayer. two more things we wanna do. So Oak and Grow 007, can, we note, can you notice me please? Hi, thank you for hey, being with us. Oak and Grove. And Sally Fisher says, Dean and Sally watching in London, UK, been watching for a long time. Would like to say thank you for all your tips and learned a lot. So thank you for being with us. You live in a beautiful country. Um, Marbet from the Netherlands is hanging out with us. So um, one more thing. This will be our last question. Um, can you explain the, from Eric, can you explain the reasoning behind your clear cock trick while taping edges i have a hard time understanding exactly what the caulking does to the edge of the tape thank you and that's where that video you just posted on sunday if you really watch it you'll you fully explained it i think you did a great job sprayaholic is on we met him at the um um how are you doing he's in the uk too he's a cool guy yeah. um so i got to Took a picture with him and stuff that was um cool so matt him he's a, he's a great guy so anyways explaining so the, the caulking your tape method is just when you're on a rough surface or you're masking on baseboards and stuff like that that's got bumps and humps and peaks and valleys and stuff the paint the tape can't contour to these peaks and valleys and i'm going to exaggerate that it's gonna it's gonna span the distance of those and it's gonna leave gaps so when you paint over it and you're brushing over it, you're actually forcing paint onto the tape, you're forcing it underneath and through those peaks and valleys. And so, um, and so you just get paint bleed when you're on a bumpy or rough surface. And you, there's no, you can rub as much as you want on your tape and press it. And there's times that it's never going to contour 100%. to those 100% to those peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. And so putting caulking over the tape the clear caulking seals those peaks and valleys. So you put the tape, the caulking on, and it's just a fine bead, and you're wiping it completely off. So there's nothing left. Mm -hmm. And um, then you're putting um, paint over the top of that. The caulking has sealed the peaks and valleys so it doesn't bleed through. And, and there's gonna be you know, a bazillion questions about this, and oh my gosh, you're painting over wet caulking, and it's just gonna crack, and blah, 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 blah. I'll tell you, for, I've been doing this method in um, this method for um, 13 years mm -hmm. and it works and it works flawlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, once you learn how to do it and master it, and that's why videos are. And I'll tell you, I am not the only one that does it. You'll see, you'll get some, some critics on my social media that will um, bash me for it. But every time we meet people in person, painters in person, um, they're like, it's, I, I do it, I do it. Everybody's like, I do it, I do it, 
I do it. And then people are like, it's amazing in person. They'll tell you and they'll admit they, they don't, they do it. They just don't want to get criticized on social media for doing it. And, um, I put myself out there. You criticize me all you want, but so, it, it works. Okay, I said that was our last question, but we have one more, and I just want to answer this one. I painted my aluminum gutters with Sherman Williams duration, two coats, no primer. It bubbled and blistered. How do I go back to fix it? Two coats, what? Of duration on gutters. No primer? No primer. Duration, no primer. Okay, and um, I'm... I, I would consider myself an expert when it comes to doing gutters because we painted a lot of gutters. Been there, done that. And um, been there, done that. We, we've had to go back and scrape gutters and redo gutters yeah. and all this stuff. Um, what do you do? To if fix you it? don't prime your gutters, if you don't prime them with a bonding primer, um, ten percent of the time, um, duration. Uh, will work, but 10% of the time you're going to get um, bubbles and blisters. Duration is self priming, right? And um, it's, it's self priming, but 10% of the gutters. time there's no rhyme or reason why. We've gone through with paint companies, with reps and stuff, and studied it and tried to figure it out. They have no idea why, with sometimes after the first winter, typically is when the bubbling starts. And um, guess what? So you did you go change back. your method to always priming? We did. Always. We never not prime our gutters with bonding primer. So um, we use a bonding primer, not just an all-purpose primer. So you prime with a bonding primer, and then we painted them with duration or resilience over the top of that, and never one failure after that. Never. So one. how so how do you deal with the failure? You have. To go back, um, okay. we would scrape. Um, we would take a sanding, like a medium sanding sponge, and you go back and you have to go right over every single bubble and you sand it down. And you got to sand it enough till it feathers those edges in. But I'll tell you. And then did you prime over that, then paint and, it? And then you prime over it and then you paint it. But it's like um, the hundred year old house. Um, that you're painting that's got multiple layers of paint, chipping and peeling and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It always has that that chunky look mm -hmm. to it. You can never get that 100% um, sanded down, even if you bond, bondoed and stuff. You can never get it to where it, at the right light, the right angle where you can um, not tell. And um, then you're gonna have to, you end up having to replace the gutter if the product customer is really picky about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, every time that we ever had to go back and re-sand them um, and, and sand them down, the customers were always happy with um, the end result to it. But as a professional painter, you know, in the right light, you could still see it. But, um, you know, you can see some form of outline, some port of gradual um, transition of where, it, the the bubble was and was not and then where um it didn't bubble it still stands a chance of bubbling after the next winter again mm -hmm. and it was um the weirdest thing and um and there are gutters like high gloss gutters that aren't meant to be painted and then there's gutters that are meant to be painted and we had them where that they were um, gloss, we had them where they were oxidized enough that you know it should have bonded and it didn't bond. But here, this is this is the one thing that's really weird: the gutter part. Mm -hmm. um, every house at the gutter part, it actually bubbled on the downspout. It never bubbled. We never had a downspout ever bubble. It was always the gutter. It's interesting. So, yeah. so um, anyways, stay tuned. We are going to be. Um, coming out with the Paint Life Care shirts on Monday. Hopefully they'll be on the store um, and we'll have some more information on our website. So if you want to be a part of it or if you know of um, a situation where um, painters care, we can step in and help and um, make a difference. Let us know. And um, thank you everybody for being with us. And so Exy Painter just asked, did I sand the gutter? So, um, our method that we finally started using, um, you know, 10 years ago or so was, um, was, didn't include sanding. We sprayed them with a bonding primer, mm -hmm. which a bonding primer um, should stick to glass. If you're using a good bonding primer, like XIM bonding primer, you don't have to sand glass and it'll stick to it. So we would spray um, the gutters with a bonding primer 
and, um, with, and a 310 tip, let that dry, and then we would spray one coat um, of duration or resilience over the top of that and never had a failure and never sanded them. That's um, power washed them really good when um, during the power washing process. So um, power washed them with a rotating um, rotating nozzle agitating at um, 3000 PSI. So, so thank you for being with us and yep. everybody have a great weekend and keep safe and healthy. Um, stay tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. There you go. Ow.